Do you want to know what medical apps I use as a doctor? Make sure you watch this video until the end because in this video, I'm going to show you my top 10 medical apps I use frequently as a doctor. Thank you for stopping by this video. If you're new to this channel, hi, my name is Dr. Erwin Kwan. I'm on a mission to help doctors lead a happier and fulfilled life. I make new videos every Thursday on the subject of GP training, well-being, and high performance. Every Thursday, I publish a new video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any future videos. And don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified first each time I publish a new video. The first app is a BNF, British National Formulary. This app references information about prescribing drugs, interaction, and pharmacology. I use the BNF frequently to check and confirm drug dosage, interaction, any side effects before prescribing any medication that I'm not familiar with. Let's search dexamethasone on the app. Dexamethasone is a commonly prescribed drug for different indications in different dosage. It's vital to make sure that you're prescribing the correct dose for the correct indication. If we go back and look at important safety information, we can read the risk of corticosteroid. Let's look at the contraindications of dexamethasone. Let's open the quotients tab. Now let's go back and look at the list of interactions. Let's go back again and have a look at the side effects of corticosteroids. You can also switch to BNF for children. Prescribing in pediatrics require more steps as the dosage of drugs usually vary according to the age or weight of the child. The second on the list is clinical knowledge summaries. This is a website that I use frequently. It is provided by NICE. NICE CKS provides the summary of the current evidence base and practical guidance on best practice. CKS is very useful if you need to check the latest guidance on a clinical topic. When I'm consulting with my patients, I make sure that I spend most of the time with them speaking and listening to what they'll say rather than in front of the screen. But sometimes I do have to look at the screen. And if I'm going to look at the screen, I make sure that my patient understand what I'm doing. So if you have to check nice CKS during your consultation, just let your patient know that you're just going to check what the latest guidance say. Patients usually don't mind if you're being honest and open with them that you need to check what the latest guidance say because medicine moves so quickly and things are changing all the time. So if you need to check nice CKS guidance, what does it say? Just let your patient know and be open and honest with your patient. Tell them that you're just going to make sure that you check what the latest guidance say before you recommend a treatment. And patients usually have no problem if you have to check to double check something. The third on the list is RX guidelines. This is an app that allows you to check what your local guidance is on antimicrobial prescribing. So it's a good app to have if you want to prescribe for a common infection and to know what to prescribe safely. If your trust or your health board is not registered to RX guidelines, there's an alternative app called MicroGuide. Either OX guidelines or MicroGuide will help you to guide your treatment when you're prescribing for common infections. Number four on the list is GP Notebook. GP Notebook provides concise and up-to-date information for general practice. There's a useful website as you don't have to search and read through pages on the internet to find relevant information of a clinical topic. Number five on the list is MedCalc app. This is a fast evidence-based medical calculator. This is one of my favorites app because it saves so much time when I'm having to calculate for scoring system. It is a useful tool to calculate the well score for DVT and P. The app is easy to use and provides information about the scoring system. It also provides concise information about the scoring system and provides you with the next steps based on the calculation. MedCal can be used to calculate other scoring systems such as Chadva score, Hasblad score, and Curb65 score, to mention just a few. MedCal is a very useful tool I use on home visits. 
Number six on the list is Medscape. If you're looking for the latest medical news in your specialty, then Medscape will probably have it. It provides the latest medical news for doctors and healthcare professionals. If you want to catch up on the latest news, then check out Medscape. Medscape also provides information about pathologies, conditions, and drug trials. Number seven on the list is the RCGP. The RCGP website has a lot of resources for e-learning, for hot topics, clinical updates. It also have got an app that you can use, the RCGP app. As a member of the RCGP, you also have access to the Innovate and the BGGP magazine, which are very useful to make sure that you're up to date with general practice. Number eight on the list is patient.info. Patient.info also have an app that you can signpost to patient. Patient.info has accurate and up-to-date resources for layperson and professional. If you want to print a patient information leaflet or signpost a patient to this website on a particular condition, then this is a reliable website. It is also useful for GP registrars preparing for the exams to learn how to explain medical condition in simple lay terms. Number nine on the list is Microsoft Teams. With the pandemic, virtual meeting has become the norm. Microsoft Teams is far from a perfect software to use. It takes some time to get used to it, but once you get the hang of it, it's simple to use. Teams is a great tool to use for video conferencing and collaboration online where you can share files easily. An alternative video conferencing software is Zoom. Zoom is something I've used as well, but because my VTS is held on Microsoft Teams, this is what I'm using most of the time. What do you think about Zoom? Do you prefer to use Microsoft Teams or Zoom? Let me know down in the comment section. Last but not least is YouTube. YouTube is such a great platform that provides access to educational content. Since starting med school, I've used YouTube to help revise and prepare for exams. Having found educational videos useful on YouTube, this is one of the reasons that inspired me to start my own YouTube channel. If you're a medical student, useful medical YouTube channel includes Osmosis, Lecturio, and Ninja Med Lectures. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If there are any medical apps or any website that you use frequently that I've not mentioned, please share them down below in the comment section. I look forward to reading your comments. If you found this video useful, make sure you smash the like button. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.